Well back. Tune into the episode of Rock Boys Football Bill. Massive matchup in the ACC. Louisville heading on the road to play Clemson. Clemson playing about as good a football as you see any team in the country heading into the bye weekend into this football game. Then you look at Louisville. This is one of the best five and three teams that we see in the country. Like if there's one message I want to get across over the next 12 minutes, this is a dangerous Louisville team that has some intriguing matchups heading on the road to play Clemson. Look at them. Like you look at the BC game, they outgained it by almost 150 yards, almost lost that football game. You look at when they went on to Notre Dame, outgained Notre Dame by over 100 yards, lost that football game. This is a good Louisville team. It's dangerous in a lot of different ways, specifically on the offensive side of the football. Fired up to get into it now. Before we do it, as always, just want to say one thank you to you guys. These these preview prediction episodes have been a blast for the boys. And the amount of support y'all have shown, it, it means the absolute world. If you guys do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Much more importantly, let it fly in the comment section. A lot of different ways you can look at this football game. So let it fly whether you agree, disagree with the boys. Dill, without further ado, let's get into this one. I think you got to start with this Louisville offense. Going up against the Clemson defense that, Dill, if you would have told me that going into the month of November, what unit were we talking about and being more concerned about for Clemson, the offense or the defense, I wouldn't have told you. It was the Clemson defense, but that's probably where we are. This Clemson offense has been awesome in the month of October. The Clemson defense, I don't think, has been as bad as some people perceive. I think Davo Sweeney's putting in the twos and threes really early in these football games. But there's been some struggles, specifically with the communication in the back end with this Clemson secondary. Well, though, they got a Louisville offense that's coming in that if you're struggling with communication in the back end, Jeff Brown's going to make you pay as a Louisville play caller. How do you see this Louisville offense going up against this Clemson defense matching up here? And I think what gets additionally tricky is like, yeah, you have to deal with a elite play caller and Ja'Kari Brown and some yep. really good weapons headlined by Ja'Kari Brooks. But you also, I don't think this Louisville team is like a team that Clemson can just go physically manhandle. Yeah, Not to say I don't give Clemson the advantage with their defensive line versus this Louisville offensive line. But Louisville's offensive line does a really, really good job in pass protection. The only team that's kind of gotten to them a little bit is Miami. And Miami, that defensive line is as good as anyone in the country. And I wouldn't say Miami just ran them off the field. So I don't even want to like necessarily imply yeah, that. Yep. It's just you look like – Clemson, a lot of what they do is predicated on being able to beat teams up really badly from that defensive line. And Louisville is just not like that team. Their offensive line is really pretty sound. Yeah, you look at Louisville <laughs> on offense, it, it's predicated on explosive plays. Number one team in the country in 40-yard-plus plays. Number five team in the country in 20-plus-yard plays. This is how they move the football. They're top 15, tongue, TF, top 15 team in the country in yards per play metric overall. Like they want to hit those big plays. You look at this Clemson defense, and I, I talked about this a little bit last week. I almost want to see Clemson play a little bit more man coverage, like get back to that cover one man that we're used to seeing Clemson run because it kind of mitigates some of the communication problems that we've seen in terms of passing off zones and worrying about uh, kind of giving off routes. Well, when you got cornerbacks like Avian Throw, who I think is probably the best cornerback in the ACC right now, and then Jaden Lucas, who's playing some really good football, like just go ask him to play some man coverage, simplify this defense for Clemson in the back end because you got the dudes to be really disruptive. Really interested to see if Clemson cleans it up a little bit in the back end, hosting Louisville this weekend. I think the I mean, second story with this Louisville team, like you still probably want to see who that second weapon is now with Cullen Lacey taking red shirt. Like who can really punish you because it. It feels to me like it's very reliant right now on Ja'Cory yeah. Brooks. And even in that BC game, like can Amari Huggins Bruce or Chris Bell, like one of those guys get something going and be more consistent? Because frankly, you haven't really seen a ton of consistency from anyone besides Brooks. And Brooks, he's been a real problem for everyone. Like oh, he's yeah. his level is way, way above what I thought it was gonna be coming in. So he is punishing guys, but like you look when you have an AVN Terrell playing the way he plays, and then Jaden Lucas, who's really like, I mean, his game's been much much improved if you all stayed obviously healthy. He's played really well too. I think you want to go see who that second weapon is and what they can do against you. Yeah, no, I, I'm kind of with you. I wouldn't say it's a one-dimensional passing attack, but they want to run this passing attack through Ja'Cory Brooks, and, and rightfully so. The guy's been a stud averaging almost 20 yards per catch, 790 yards on the year. Um, Dill, I think the last storyline for this Clemson defense is fit in the run. We've talked about this a lot. 
Louisville has a set of running backs in Isaac Brown and Duke Watson. The, you Clemson fans, you're going to hear their names on the broadcast come Saturday night. They're two true freshmen that are absolute burners. Now, they don't break a ton of tackles. They're not the most physically imposing running backs. But if you do not fit the run and you let them get to the second level relatively clean, and if you don't take good angles if you're a safety, they're going to take 15-yard runs and make them 50-plus to the house. These guys are absolutely electric. This is a Clemson defense that wants to be aggressive. But if you are Clemson, you want to make sure you're fitting the run the right way. Because if you can do that and kind of get Louisville a little bit behind the chains, that's probably the recipe to be having success uh, against this Louisville offense. Uh, let's let's flip the sides here. And Dill, I think the, the most disappointing aspect of this Louisville team has been what the defense has been. Like you take a look at the numbers, 28.1 points per game. That's 81st in the country. This was a really good Louisville defense last year that I thought from a personnel standpoint got better going into 2024. And they just, they haven't, they haven't been better. They've been quite frankly worse. And you have a Clemson offense that is markedly improved from what we've seen in 2023. I think the big storyline for Clemson is one year. Look at the K club Nicators deal. This Clemson offense, 42 points per game. That's number four in the country, seven yards per play. That's number 10 in the country. What I'm looking at here, Dill, is can Clemson stay on schedule? That has been, we talk a lot about TJ Moore and Brian Wesco creating these explosive plays. They've been really good in that department. It's been massive for Clemson. But one of the other storylines that we haven't talked enough about was how it is how good they've been on staying on schedule. K Club Nick's taken sacks and only 2% of his dropbacks. That's top 20 in the country. Phil Maffa and this Clemson offensive rushing attack, they're averaging 5.9 yards per carry. That's number six in the country. They're staying on schedule, keeping that whole playbook or open. Louisville wants to be disruptive. They want to be aggressive, create negative plays. Can Clemson stay on schedule and then capitalize on the explosive plays when the opportunity presents itself? And that's that's the fundamental issue with Louisville is they're just not creating those plays. And again, that's the frustrating part is you feel like you have the horse. I mean, you got yeah. guys like Ashton Gelati, Tramel blanking on his and name. Tramel Logan, <laughs> but he's been a dog. Tramel Logan's playing. Like, he's looked good too. But again, it's something's not clicking where they're not consistently generating those sacks, TFLs on runs. And again, that's where you want to get Clemson. So it's like the frustrating part is you have the personnel you feel like if you're – Louisville to challenge this Clemson offense and kind of make them look maybe more what they looked last year, where they were in second and nine, second and ten, yeah. third and nine, third and ten, like those type of situations pretty consistently. But for whatever reason, it's not really happening right now. And hence you're giving up a lot of yards, you're keeping teams on the field, you're giving them a lot of points. It's it's frustrating because you, you watch the 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 games for Louisville. Like they're disruptive. Those guys are good players, they're making plays. But it, it, they're not sacking the quarterback as much. They're not when they're creating pressure. They're not finishing and creating those negative plays, and they're not creating turnovers. This was a Louisville team that was top ten in the country in turnovers created last year. That number is not even over one now. Dill, I, I think one of the the broad things to talk about is Clemson's been doing a lot of the small things right. They're top ten in the country in turnover margin. They're quite good in the red zone, although I think have settled for more field goals than I would like. But then you look at Louisville. They're bad on third downs, they're turning the football over, and they're, they're they're not operating in the red zone. Like that seems to be the difference between these two teams heading into this matchup. Let's let's get to the pick here. Louisville heading on the road to play Clemson. They'll who you got. I like Clemson. It really does start with again. I look at the defense. I feel like people are just like, whenever Clemson shows any weakness on the defense side of the ball, people are going to jump on it and say it's bad and really get after them. And you kind of said it like they're playing their de- They're playing into their depth a little bit, which was always going to be a little bit of a question. Now they've stayed healthy at the top. So I don't worry about it a whole lot, but like when they get to that depth, you're playing a lot of young guys, you can make mistakes. You can give some things up, but I still think that top end unit's really, really good. And I look at Louisville's defense, like what can they exactly do? to challenge Clemson again like they need to be able to create negative plays you like the personnel but it's just not on the field something's not clicking and then you look they're they're not defending the middle of the field very well and you look like that was where one place I think you really liked yeah. where Clemson could work and they've opened up the other side or the other portions of the field on the boundary with those two young guys but you still have guys like Brendan Stuhl and Antonio Williams and with the way the safeties and linebackers are playing for Louisville right now I think those guys can feast, and those guys feasting, I think, can be a real problem. You're, I think you're 100% right. Like the, You look at the boundary cornerbacks for Louisville, Corey Thornton, Quincy Riley, really good players. 
but the linebackers and safeties haven't been very good taking away the middle of the field. Um, that's where, that, like, as much as we've been fired up to see, like, Wesco and TJ Moore creating down the field on the boundary, like, you make no mistake about it. Like, where is K Klubnik most comfortable? That's RPO attack in the middle. He's been very good there this year. I think he can be very good there this uh, on Saturday night as well. And at the end of the day, just, like, eyeball test it. What team you trust more right now? What team's making the plays to win football games? I think this Louisville team is very good, but they're not making winning football plays Clemson's very good, and they're making those plays. So give me Clemson as well. Going to be a really, really fun game. I'm fired up for this one. Anytime it's Coach Brown's really still, at the end of the day, the first real test Clemson's going to face since they played Georgia. As much as you want to yeah, talk about I, like, yeah. what they look like, they have been playing the toughest teams in the world. They've been really, really good. I still even think that Georgia game, like the score looks like more out of hand than it really was. Clemson was right in that for all that first half. Obviously fell apart a bit in the second but like we'll still see at the end of the day what this Clemson offense is about, what their whole team's about. Because Louisville, you're right, like they're probably a much better team than anyone's going to think they are based on their record and frankly the results of their games. Like they're still when they're on and they got to make winning plays, they haven't really done it. But even if they don't, you'll still get a sense of where Clemson's at down to down. Because Louisville, as much as they're not making winning plays, they're still really yeah. good down to down. For I think this is this is the best team Clemson's played since Georgia. And now, and we kind of said it, like, now we get a real sense of, like, all right, how good is this Clemson team? We're going to find out Saturday night. Give me the Tigers, though. Appreciate you guys rocking with it. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Appreciate you guys. And we'll talk to y'all later.